Florence is so so beautiful. You can tell that it's the birthplace of the Renaissance because everywhere you look it's magic. I'm about to go to Florence. I'm in Milan Centrale, the main station of Milan, and this train is so long. I arrived in Florence. It's a bit cloudy, but I'm really curious to go and find out everything about the city and see all the monuments. And now I'm going to look for the BNB. It's a 36 minute walk in 80 meters from the main train station, so it's not exactly around the corner, but I don't mind walking because I've been sitting the whole day. This black sky is worth of Scotland. This door is magic because there's no key to open it. You just use your phone, you go to this link and you put the phone next to the door and you click open door on your phone and it opens. This is 2024 for you. This is very cute, very tiny and very cute. Okay, let's go for an apartment tour. So this is the bathroom. They left shampoo and hair balm as well, which I never find. This is so great. Let's see what's behind the window. You're standing against the hippo. Never mind, I'm afraid that even if I use the this, they would see inside the bathroom. So I'll just leave that closed. Do this as well. Yeah, much better. But let's go to the part I'm most excited about. Basically, as soon as I saw the photos of this flat, I didn't want any other flat because it looked so cozy and it's not even that close to the center, but like I'm quite stubborn. So I was like, no, this is, I don't want to stay anywhere else. And this is the loft. I'm so short that I'm not even touching the ceiling. It's just my size, the right height. I just need to be careful not to fall down the stairs because they're quite steep but I should I should make it I should survive hopefully in the end the journey here went very well I was worried because you never know with trains especially in Italy but yeah let's not think about the cliches I was so worried because I only had 20 minutes to change trains in Milan but the train from Como to Milan was spot on on time because it arrived from Switzerland and then the train from Milan to Florence was spot on on time as well and so yeah I'm very happy that everything went well and the plan of the day is to visit the Uffizi which is the most famous museum of Florence and probably one of the most famous museums of Italy as well and the most beautiful so I'm really excited and also I don't have to pay because I'm an Italian living abroad and so I've got free entrance I mean not not free the free ticket was for euros because you've got to pay for euros for the booking but that's not bad compared to the 20 something euros you've got to pay for the entrance so 
The only problem is that as I was so stubborn and I fell in love with this flat, it's quite far from the center and so I've got to walk. I would have to walk 39 minutes to the Uffizi, but I'm not doing that because I walked here already, but I stopped for a cappuccino halfway for a break. So I'm getting the bus and I downloaded an app called My AT, I think. So I will buy the ticket on the app and then I'll go to the Uffizi. I'm quite tired because last night I went to bed at 2.30 because me and my cousin talk and talk and talk until late at night. I would like to have a nap, but that would be a waste being in Florence and having a nap. So I will have to go. Also because with my booking, I can access the Uffizi between a quarter to five and five o'clock. So I don't have much time. And then I'll head to the Uffizi. <clears throat> See you later. I left my umbrella at home. So this is the next best solution. The desert land where the sun beats down like a cattle brand. No sign of water, but you quench my thirst. You're the only one. From today onwards, you can't get a free entry if you're an Italian resident abroad, so I had to pay 25 euros. This is the first time I see Ponte Vecchio. This is the birthplace of the Renaissance and from the beauty of this place I think you can tell. back to the B&B because as usual my phone is about to die but that's fine because I want to go back to have a shower because in the end I didn't have time to have a shower before. The afternoon started on the verge of hysteria because I hated that I had to pay 25 euros and like Two days ago, in 2023, I wouldn't have had to pay, but from the first day of 2024, they make Italians living abroad pay the full ticket. And no one told me, and on the website it still says that I don't have to pay, so I will ask for a refund. I wanted to show you a shopping haul from Italy. So I bought some of the products I miss the most when I'm in Scotland. So first thing, Taralli. They are typical from the region of Puglia and I love them so much. My favorite kind of Taralli is with onions, but I couldn't find them. So I got these ones. Is there a light in here? No. Never mind. Then I got focaccia. My favorite, again, is the one with onions, but I love the one with olives as well. And then the one with tomatoes. And then I got, well, actually, these are not my favorites, but I was so hungry when I went into the mini supermarket that I got them. And it's a typical sweet with chocolate. And then my very favorite is this one, which is um, fresh kind of cheese. And like my favorite thing to do is having this with taralli. I also bought 
oat milk. All this was 15 euros 93 uh, cents. That is about 13 pounds more or less. I'm way too excited for this, but I just love when I'm on holiday and I buy stuff at the grocery store and then have it at home in a cozy setting with a nice program on TV. Simple, cheap, but so nice. The Cathedral of Florence is called Santa Maria del Fiore and I would trivially say it's nothing but an architectural masterpiece. It's the largest masonry structure in the world and this doesn't surprise me as I felt that you could walk and walk around Florence and you'd always casually find yourself on a different new side of it. The first rock of the cathedral was laid on the 8th of September 1296. The church was designed by Arnolfo di Cambio and consecrated by the Pope of the time in 1436. Its stunning dome, the largest brick dome in the world, was engineered by Florence-born architect Filippo Brunelleschi, a founding father of Renaissance architecture. His body lies in the crypt of the cathedral. The cathedral, Giotto's Campanile and the baptistry are UNESCO World Heritage. <music> Airbnb was in an area of Florence called Le Cure. Even if it was a bit far from the center, it was just great. Actually, I think I liked it specifically because it was far from the center, away from the noise, crowds, and overpriced tourist traps. My favorite restaurant was called Cucchetta. It was homely and elegant at the same time. The food was special, and you could get the feeling that actual inhabitants of Florence would go there for a fancy family birthday party as well. A few steps away from the flat there was also a quirky cocktail bar called Fake, which had a really interesting cocktail menu as well as good food. To be honest, there wasn't a single place where I didn't eat well in Tuscany. It was just unbelievable. And finally there was a cute bar by the river for breakfast as well.
Feliz.